I've got a great handy tip for you today. If you do stationary quilting or sit down quilting where you move the fabric instead of the machine, you always need to base the three layers together first and to create that quilt sandwich. I'm gonna walk you through the steps of one simple way to do this. So basting is placing your top with the batting and backing using a method to attach the three layers together so they don't shift or wrinkle while quilting. There are many ways to accomplish this. The first step is to prepare your quilt top. Press your quilt top very well. It's recommended to press your seams towards the darker fabric. Trim any frayed threads. So let's take a look at this quilt top. On this one, the seams are pressed towards the darker fabric. That means that on the front side, I won't get a shadow line here from the darker fabric showing through the lighter fabric on the front. We want to be sure and trim loose threads too. So you can see I've got some threads here and I've got some darker threads here and over here that if we leave those there behind this lighter fabric, they will show through on the front. So you wanna just be sure and grab a small pair of scissors and clip those smaller threads those darker threads especially, uh, before you start basting your quilt. Number two, the batting. Use a quality batting for your project. Cut a piece that is at least four inches larger than your quilt top on each side. So that means I would take the size of my quilt and add eight inches to the length and eight inches to the width, and then I would get the correct size of batting. Prepare your backing. Backing is recommended that it's at least five inches larger than each side of the quilt top. So that means that it would be 10 inches deeper or taller and 10 inches wider than your quilt top. Piece the back if needed and be sure to press the seams well. If you're using a wide back, be sure to press it too. You should always press your backing before you start basting. Okay, the steps for basting your quilt. The first thing you want to do is fold each of the layers so that you can line everything up correctly. We're going to take the top and fold it in half, both vertical then horizontal, with the wrong side out. So I'm going to take my quilt top here and fold it in half vertically. matching up my edges. I'm just going to lay this down here so I can get it nice and straight. And it's great to use a, a nice size table. If you happen to have a large cutting table, you can use that. If you don't, one of these, uh, like a lifetime, a Costco table, these are really great to use. Okay, so I've got my quilt top folded, wrong sides out. It's prepared and ready for basting. Next, I want to take my batting and I want to once again fold it into those four quadrants. So I'm going to fold it in half vertically and horizontally. And I'll just lay it down here to make sure that it is lined up. And then I'll set it to the side here with my quilt top. Next, I'm going to take my back and I am going to fold it in half both vertically and horizontally once again with the wrong side out because those are the sides we're going to make sure are touching each other. So fold it in half. This backing is definitely a little larger <laughs> than my front, which is good. Okay. Make sure that you've got nice crisp folds and I'm gonna lay this on the table here. I'm gonna smooth it out and make sure there aren't any wrinkles in the fabric. Sometimes this means you've gotta peel back and smooth each layer individually. Okay. Now because this is a little bit of a smaller quilt and I can do it pretty much all in one shot on this uh, table. I am going to grab a pin here. I've got some safety pins and I'm going to mark where my center is. I'm 
just for reference right now. I'm gonna remove this safety pin very quickly. So I'll set that there. I'm gonna lay this out on the table. Make sure it's nice and smooth. And because I have this pin here, I know exactly where my center point is. I'm going to lay down my batting. I'm gonna set my quilt top down here on the floor for right now. Keep my, keeping my batting nice and smooth. And I am going to find the center point of my batting, which I know is right here in the center. And I am going to lay it down so that it is lined up with that center point. And then I've got an option here. If I want to spray baste this together, at this point I would spray baste. And I, liked, I prefer to spray on the fabric rather than on the batting and then smooth it out. And then flip this side over, smooth everything down, and be sure and do it from the center out. That way you'll avoid having any lumps or bumps in the center of the quilt. So I've got this all smoothed out there. If I was using spray basting like this, I would peel back this side, spray it, and then once again, smooth it out. If I'm not using spray basting, I can just go ahead and just smooth it out very carefully with my hands. Next, I'm going to flip this over. And I've still got my pin there in the center, so I'm keeping things straight. And I'm going to put the rest of my batting out, or sorry, my backing out. I'm gonna smooth everything nice and, nice and very well here. And then we're gonna flip it over one more time. And we're going to flip that other side of the batting out onto the fabric. So keeping everything nice and smooth there. And I want to be sure at this point to grab this safety pin and remove it. I don't want to leave that inside the quilt. Okay. So we're going to scoot this towards me. And if I was spray basting, I would spray baste here. But because I'm gonna show you how to do this with pins, what I'm going to do now is lift up this other half of my batting and just use my hand and smooth it down. Now I'm going to remark that center with the pin again so that when I'm ready to lay down my quilt top, I can easily do that. If, if you look here, you can see that my seam underneath here has flipped up and flipped over and I've got a little bit of a bump. So I'm just gonna take and work my hand underneath here to smooth that out, working my way out and then re-smoothing everything. It's important to pay attention to how your seams are laying so that you don't end up with any weird ridges or bumps in your quilt. Okay, now I'll take my quilt top and because I have that center point marked with the fold, I'm just gonna lay that right there against that pin. And once again, make sure everything's nice and smooth on the bottom. And then I'm gonna go ahead and remove this pin so that I don't forget and leave it in there. And then I will just unfold. And once again, if I'm spray basting, I'm spraying this as I go. If I am gonna use pins, safety pins, I'm just gonna use my hands, once again, always smoothing from the center out and making sure to not flip any of my press seams as I go. This is also the time when I can take a minute and look and if I see threads that need to be trimmed, any of that kind of stuff, I can take a few minutes and do that. Just kind of make sure that everything is neat and tidy. I'm happy with the way everything looks though, so I'm gonna go ahead and push the quilt top up over the side and then smooth it out. Now, if I'm spray basting, I would lift up the other side and repeat, spray it, and then 
uh, smooth it down. Using pins is another great way to baste your quilt. So let me just show you really quickly. You can use just any size of safety pins. Uh, there's lots of great ones out there. I always like to start from the center and work my way out. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pop that pin through. Make sure that I get all three layers of the quilt. And I'll just keep putting pins in here until I have stabilized the quilt. Now, depending on how dense of quilting I'm gonna do is gonna depend on how many pins I put in here. I normally will put pins in about every six to eight inches in kind of a grid pattern across the quilt. It makes it easier for me to make sure and not miss them. I will also think about how I'm going to quilt the quilt and if I'm going to be doing a lot of stitch in the ditch or things like that, I'll be sure to place my pins so that I don't have to move them consistently as I'm quilting. Okay, at this point, I am, once I've gotten all my pins down, I'm ready to go ahead and take my quilt to my machine and get it finished.